Come, let us sing for joy unto the Lord. Let us shout to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us give our thanks Come, unto let us the Lord. Give let us sing to the Lord. Sing a song of exaltation. Come, let us sing. Come, let us sing. Come, let us sing for joy. 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 so we may hear your voice. The world turns to books and winds of the future. O Lord, keep us your ways and on your path. We enter this new year with hope and excitement. O Lord, remind us that you lead us. O Lord, guide us as we look to you and worship you. Amen.
My dear friends, as we come to our time of confession and prayer, let us remember that God is faithful. However, He called us to be saints, but we are more comfortable with the role of a sinner. He called us to be His servants, but we worry that we lack the skills to do the work. He put a new song of grace in our mouths, but we stumble on unfamiliar words. God showed us the work to be tackled, but we turn away defiant, insisting we have more important things to do. Let us therefore come before our God. Let us state our humble confession and ask for His forgiveness. Let us pray. Hear the assurance of God's forgiveness and love. God is ever-present. The God who knew us before our birth loves us still and strengthens us that we will one day be blameless through the gift of Jesus Christ. God offers forgiveness, grace, and mercy. Enter into His life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so as forgiven people, let us give one another the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us greet one another with the greeting of peace while singing Mahal na Mahal Kita, Panginoon. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Ado of Fairview Park United Methodist Church, greeting you a very happy New Year. This month of January is not only the beginning of year 2021, it is also Bible Month. And so for the whole month, we will remember and celebrate the role that the Word of God plays in our lives. This Sunday is also the second Sunday after Christmas, and the last Sunday of the Advent season. 
as well as the beginning of the season of Epiphany. And on this second Sunday after Christmas, we have our brothers and sisters celebrating their birthdays. Today, we have Nicodemus Abadisho Sr. and John Goldberg celebrating their birthday. Tomorrow, we have Christine Sire. And on the 8th of January, we have Christine Joy uh, Lagpata. And on January 9, we have Giovanni Villanueva and Alejandrino Alfonso Jr. Let us greet these brothers and sisters of ours with our birthday song. For our Old Testament reading, Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 to 14. And it says, This is what the Lord says, Sing with joy for Jacob, shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your faces heard and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor, a great throng with return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble, because I am Israel's father, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Lord will ransom Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the grain, the new wine, and the oil, the young of the flocks and the herds. It will be like a well-watered garden, and they will sorrow no more. Then maidens will dance and be glad, young men and all as well. I will return their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the peace with abundance and my people will be filled with bounty. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 to 14. And it reads, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will to the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the one He loves. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, He made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Christ, to be put into effect, when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In Him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will, in order that we who were first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of His glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believe, you were marked 
in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And for our gospel reading, we will be reading from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. And I will be reading from the New International Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Verse 14, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace, in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made known or has made Him known. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. See the weary way. 
A blessed Sunday morning, everyone. Church, good morning. Isang maganda at mapagpalang araw po ng linggo sa ating lahat. Kamusta na po tayo? Today is the second Sunday after Christmas. The last Sunday in the Christmas season, but still, we are in the season. Today also, my dear friends, is the first Sunday for the year 2021. And so, allow me to extend my greeting uh, from my family to yours. A happy and a blessed New Year to everyone. Maligaya at uh, mapagpalang bagong taon po sa ating lahat. Gaya nga po ng sinabi ko kanina, this is the last Sunday for the Christmas season. And so we are, my dear friends, trans transitioning into a new season. For next week, we will be celebrating Epiphany. Opo, Epiphany season na next Sunday. Are we ready, my dear friends, to transition? Are we ready to move forward? Yan at lahat ng yan ang ating pong pagbubulay-bulayan para po sa linggong ito. And so after hearing the message of Christmas, I hope po na tumalima sa ating mga puso Sa ating mga buhay, ang lahat po ng ating mga narinig, ano po, noong panahon ng kapaskuhan. And so after hearing the message of Christmas, what's next? What is in store for us after hearing the Christmas message? The Christmas message of hope, of joy, of peace and love. Are we ready for the next chapter? Yan nga po ang magandang tanong para sa atin, ano po. Well, my dear friends, today's lectionary, our Old Testament reading from Jeremiah, brings us back to the time of the exile. That for several decades, the Israelites have suffered in a foreign land, slaves in a foreign land. But now through the prophet, the Lord Almighty has spoken words of redemption, of ransom, of bringing back, the bringing back of His people. Back to the land of promise, where there will be richness, fullness, and rejoicing. For the Lord, their shepherd, will be bringing them back home. Long ago, my dear friends, God covenanted with Abraham to make him a great nation. Hindi po ba? Makikita po natin yan in Genesis chapter 12. And to make him a blessing 
to all the families of the earth. Later, God promised David, your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. That is from 2 Samuel chapter 7. And so at that moment, Israel here might be in disarray. They are in disorder. But the Lord's promises are still intact. The Lord has allowed Israel to suffer, to purge it of its sinful ways. Once Israel has seen the light, the Lord will return its suffering into rejoicing. And so our Old Testament reading tells us that the process of purification has ended. Di po ba napakaganda nun? And now the remnants will be brought back and there will be full of rejoicing. God's people will once again experience God's wonderful salvation. Now this is good news. Ngayon, kung tatanungin po natin, what does this Old Testament lectionary tell us today? Ano naman po ang ibig sabihin nito sa atin or the relevance of this story to us now? Well, the year 2020 may have brought so much hardship to many of us. Many have lost their jobs, closed their businesses, have brought us heavy burdens that left many depressed, worried, afraid, and at a loss. But my dear friends, God's Word tells us that He is still in control. Amen po ba doon? Yes, He is still in control and not our circumstances. Hindi po ang mga nangyari sa buhay natin ang siyang mangingibabaw, kundi ang salita ng Diyos sa atin. As we open this new year, we may feel afraid. We may feel the anxiety and the concern for what's ahead of us or concern for the unknown. Hindi po ba? Tayo pong mga tao ay uh, lagi natin naka, na, tayong nakakaramdam ng gano'n. Ano? Kapag ka hindi tayo sure or uncertain tayo sa sa ano, di po ba, ay nagkakaroon tayo ng pangamba. But again, God's word brings us words of comfort, words of promise that suffering, pain, and troubles are not here to stay forever. Sabihin nyo nga po, not to stay forever. That is the good news of God to all of us. But instead, the Christmas message offers us hope and good news that if we believe and have faith in the trustworthy word of the Almighty, we can be assured of His deliverance and His salvation. Trustworthy word of God. His word. Ang salita. Kaya naman, ito naman po ang pinapatungkulan in the Gospel of John, in our reading. The fourth Gospel starts not like what we can read in other Gospels about the birth narrative, where we can read about the baby Jesus being born in a manger. The fourth Gospel starts with the Word as God. Ano pong sabi? John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The trustworthy Word of God in the Old Testament has now become flesh in Jesus Christ. Nagkatawang tao po ang Diyos, ang salita sa pamamagitan ni Kristo Jesus. Hindi na lamang salita na aasahan at pananaligan natin mga kapatid ko, hindi isang katotohanan na at katuparan na na ipanganak si Jesus Kristo. And the good news is, now that word has remained with us ever since. God with us. He is with us. Emmanuel. Meaning, journeying with us, walking with us, suffering alongside us, 
and now offering hope to us so that we can continue on living victorious lives as children of God. Ang nakakalungkot lamang mga kapatid, sabi sa talatang sampu, dumating ang, sa, ang salita sa sanlibutan, ngunit hindi siya inilala ng sanlibutan ito na nilikha sa pamamagitan niya. Yun ang sabi sa wikang Tagalog. Naparito ang salita upang makasama ng tao maglakbay sa buhay na ito, ngunit hindi siya nito kinilala at sinasama sa plano ng buhay. Kaya naman, mga kapatid, matalas, napapahamak at panay o puro kabiguan ang nangyayari sa buhay ng tao. Mga kapatid, ang mensaheng hatid ng Ebanghelyo para sa lingkong ito ay panawagang kilalanin natin ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ni Kristo ipinanganak upang makasama tayo sa lakbayin sa buhay na ito. To journey with us. Hindi na po siya malayo kung hindi siya ay malapit na na nasa sa atin. Emmanuel, nang ibig sabihin, ay suma sa atin ng Diyos. Pero papaano mamumuhay ang Espiritu ng Diyos kung hindi natin siya paihintulutang makasama siya sa lakbayin na ito? Mga kapatid, ngayong Pasko, o ngayong, mas maganda po, ngayong pagpasok, ng bagong taon. Buksan natin ang ating mga puso, ang ating mga buhay sa tawag ng Diyos na mapangunahan tayo sa buhay na ito. Sapagkat iisa lamang ang hangad ng Diyos para sa atin. Ang tayo ay dalhin niya tungo sa buhay na ganap at kasiyasiya. Tungo sa katagumpayan at pangakong buhay na walang hanggan kay Kristo Yesus. Gayun din naman ang mensaheng hatid ng Ebanghelyo para sa linggong ito ay tungkol din sa hatid na liwanag o kaliwanagan ng salita. Si Kristo ang ilaw na nagliliwanag sa sanlibutan, sabi nga po sa talatang lima. Maaaring tayo dumaan o dumadaan sa kadiliman. Ngunit may pangakong kaliwanagan si Kristo para sa ating lahat. Nawa nga po ay ating hanapin at salitsikin ang liwanag na handog ng anak ng Diyos upang hindi na tayo kailanman malinlang o madaya ng kadiliman sapagkat kay Kristo may tunay na kaliwanagan sa buhay. Sa ngalan ng Ama at ng Anak at ng Diyong Banan. Amen. Maligaya at mapagpalang bagong taon sa ating lahat. Friends, we come to our love feast. And in preparation for our love feast, please prepare a plate full of bread, a pitcher full of water, enough glasses for all. And place these on the table, and at the start of the love feast, everyone will gather around the table. The love feast is usually celebrated whenever the church is unable to celebrate Holy Communion. The love feast is different from the Holy Communion because the Holy Communion is a sacrament. The love feast, however, is a fellowship meal wherein participants demonstrate their love for each other. My dear friends, let us pray together. Come, Come to our, our table, table, Lord. Praise, praise be to you, here and everywhere. Bless, bless us all, 
and grant that we may feast with you in paradise. Amen. As we do our love feast, anyone may start and in turn offer the plate of bread to the one he or she appreciates or wishes to honor, saying, I love you because, and we will state the reason why, or I appreciate you because, or I thank God for you because, and we do this until each one is holding a piece of bread. Then anyone may start by pouring water into each glass. As with the bread, each will offer a glass of water to the one he or she wishes to honor while saying the words of appreciation or gratitude, as in the offering of the bread. Do this until each one is holding a glass of water. Then, after which, we will eat the bread and drink the water together. And so, my dear friends, we would like to invite you, you on your household, and be here in the sanctuary. Together, let us come to the Lord, to the table of the Lord, and to the table of love. Pastor Ado, I thank you for your service and your unending love for the church. Pastor DJ, I appreciate you because of your love for me and your love for me. Let us give our tithes, pledges, and love offerings to the Lord of hosts. Malimit niyong tayong nauuwi sa gayon. Darating ang mga mahal natin sa buhay. Ngunit mas ilo mo na pat natin hanapin ang ating mga pasalubong. Wali bang mas mahalaga ang mga dala kasi ang taong nagdala. Kanyan din tayo sa pagdating ang Pasko. Abala tayo sa mga dala-dala natin ang handaan mga ikalo. Iba't ibang mga gawain, ngunit na isasantabi natin ang tagadala. Ngayong Pasko, bigyan natin ng pagpapahalaga ang dahilan ng kapaskuhan at sariwain natin muli ang ma masigabong awitan ng mga anghel noong gabing ipinanganak ang Mesiyas. Walhati sa Diyos sa kaitaas-taasan at 
at sa lupay kapayapaan sa mga taong kinalulugtan niya.
Now, as we come to the close of our worship service, may I now invite you to come and pray with me. Let us all bow down and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are not altogether convinced that darkness is a thing of the past. Many people in this world feel their world is one of darkness and gloom. And after experiencing a hard year 2020, O oh Lord, many of us continue to experience hard life. It is a sin we are living in darkness. There are many varied causes, bereavement, illness, money problems, worries about family, trouble at work or not having work, and many more. Dagdag ang papanginoon ng maraming mga world issues like killings, poverty, COVID-19. There is unfair trade, there is oppression, at marami pa pong iba. It does not help when we feel that as Christians, we should be doing so much better than we are. Gracious and loving God, we rejoice that you are with us in our troubles. You know us and you love us always. Even though we have made a mess of things personally and collectively, we, you remain faithful, O oh dear God. We rejoice that your Son came not to a perfect world, but to a broken world, our world, to bring light to the darkness, our darkness. And we pray for our dark and dreary world, a world in need, in need not just of a fix, a technical fix, but in need of love, of grace, of forgiveness, and new life, hope, peace, and fellowship. In need of you, oh dear God. And so we pray, O oh Lord, that you would come alongside us and all those for whom we are praying right now. That you would show us Jesus, the light of the world, the one who came and who comes to rid us of sin, to give us life and health and peace, peace that passeth all understanding, not a temporary respite from trouble, but the strength to overcome it and ultimately to receive life eternal. Almighty God, we continue to lift up to you our church. Every single member of this church, O oh Lord, and uh, the families that we represent, we continue to lift up to you, O oh Lord, every member, and we pray, O oh Lord, that you look upon us with favor. Forgive us, O oh dear God, and renew us, transform us, and change us to be more committed to offer our lives in service to you and to one another. Oh Lord, I continue to lift up families and pray, oh God, that you will continue, oh God, to embrace them, to comfort them, to provide for them. As I call upon you, oh God, may you be there to save them. And as we enter into this new year, we pray, O oh Lord, for your spirit to really be true, O oh God, to us. Experiencing you anew every day of our lives. Allow us, O oh dear God, to rejoice in your presence. To be full and be filled, Lord, with your spirit. Allow us, O oh God, to be channels of your love, of your hope, of your peace to one another. Those who are experiencing 
illnesses, Lord, we pray for your healing hands to give them strength, to restore them back, O oh God, that they may be used for your glory. We are praying, O oh Lord, for those families who continue to struggle financially. May you allow them, O oh God, to experience abundance in this new year. That they may be used, Lord God, as an instrument that will reach out to others and bless others also. We pray, O oh God, for the leaders of your church. May you give them wisdom. May you lead them, O oh God, towards righteousness towards right living and be example, O God, of love and of honor and dignity. We pray, O Lord, for our missionaries that you continue, O Lord God, to use them in spreading the good news of the kingdom. Thank you, Almighty God, for today, for our worship service. And as we continue, O Lord, in our service to you and to one another, may you fill us with your presence. For all this, we pray in the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us receive God's holy benediction. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his righteous right hand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Until the day